Hello everyone and welcome to the first recap for HRL 2023 Indie Hog season. Re-recording, damn it, because it ended up turning into something else. I want to do like another almost like protocol cheese video, but I don't want it to go with the recap. I want them to be separate things. So I, even though I just recorded a lot, like probably half an hour, um, I want to go back. I want to do them separately. I think it's easier, more fair to, to do them separately. So that's what I'm going to do. So it'll be their own thing. So, you know, if I'm not as high energy for this one, that, that's that's just, uh, you know, being open here. That's just why, because I just recorded that. Now I'm, yeah, we're doing it again. I'm figuring out what I want to do here. So anyways, uh, I'll probably do these every three rounds or so. I'll still do the recaps, but yeah, every three rounds or so for Indie Hog, and we'll just you know, keep keeping up with it. And then eventually probably do an extra one when we get to like the final round as well. Okay. So starting off the recap. So um, going through the first three races, I'll go through the results here. So Long Beach overall, you can see it here. Top three, myself, Slaunch Detail. For this one, really close battles in the points. Back here, Long Beach, our first triple crown of the season, of course. Um, I took the first and third moto. Slaunch taking the second one. So a couple wins there, or a few wins there spread out between us. And, uh, and yeah, Long Beach, good opener round of the season, in my opinion. Then we go to Little Texas, which was an absolute cheese fest, but honestly pretty fun. Once it got settled out, honestly pretty fun. Like, it was a crazy track, but it was, it was pretty cool. Um, here's the results from that. As you can see, the overall was insane. Overall was absolutely insane. 27, 24, three points separating first all the way to sixth place. Awesome. I like that. I like that. This is what I'm saying. Like, if the oval races go well... And even if they're cheap, if if they're at least like fun and like this competitive, I'm telling you, I think a, I think a hog oval season could be pretty crazy, um, right? Like we're hitting, you know, we'll do like hog F1 could be like the, the GP hog season. Um, we'll obviously Slaunch is working on some projects. We'll try to get hog Supercross MX season as well. That's just it's, it's going to take a while. Okay, we're not saying we will do that. Okay, we will do that. It's just gonna... It's gonna take some work, okay? It's gonna take some work. Like, I, I think making those tracks with the gooses is hard, but... In the hogs, just, like, learning how to forge those tracks again, because it's completely different with the hogs, and just trying to figure... It, it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take a while. So I do want to say, for people that like that stuff, we will do that for the hogs, okay? I'll... You can hold me to this. We will do it. But I don't want to, like time pressure it. I don't want to start the season with like two tracks done and then be like, okay, we'll get these, you know what I mean? Especially for how hard those are. I want that to be one where like for the next few months, we'll just make those tracks and we'll just cook and just make tracks and get better. And, and then once we have a group of like 12 tracks or whatever that are pretty solid, be like, oh, we can run the season now. So I'd rather it be like that. Um, But, uh, but yeah, that <laughs> random, random tangent in the middle of this recap. Uh, but yeah, I just think like there's just good series potential, man. There's just good series potential. But again, little Texas, I got I got sidetracked again. Um, Roman picking up his first hog win. Detail taking his first win in the season and the second moto. Um, and Opix taking the overall, taking the overall really good play call in particular from him at the end of the second moto is mainly what got him this overall. And also just not a whole lot of consistency for most people on the night. Um, hell, Opix and it looks like am I correct? Yes, Opix and Soul were the only two drivers to get two top fives out of this night. So they were the only ones that were able to find like some great consistency. Roman and Detail didn't really have the consistency, but when they finished well, they finished on top. So that's what they, they got up there. Um, But uh, but yeah, so Little Texas again, Opix, Detail, Soul, that was the top three overall versus our Luke Slaunch Detail in the first one. Um, And again, the points gaps, Little Texas was insane. I am, even though it was cheesy, personally, I'm looking forward still after Little Texas to more hog oval races. They're cheesy, they're different, and if it's like this competitive, I think that's kind of fun and refreshing. Then we go on to Barber, the most recent one. I ended up sweeping this one with Moto 1 and Moto 2, and Detail took second overall with a nice 28, although it was very competitive. Uh, he had it with 28, Roman and Slaunch tied for third. Roman gets the tiebreak, 27 apiece there, and Soul. Fifth place with 26, so it was very close between them for that two through five, and very close on track, too. We had some good battles, like, a lot of it got separated with pitch strategy, but then eventually, like, came together. There was some really good on-track battles at Barber. Uh, I almost wished that the second moto was, like, another two laps, because there was a really good second place battle heating up, and I was just watching it in the video, and I'm like, 
damn it needed like two more laps needed this to keep going um because yeah it was it was pretty fun to watch but i was this was a track of my own that i was a little apprehensive about of how it race and then we raced it and i was like there was some good bad like it was it was better than i thought it was better than i thought it was actually went pretty well um but yeah that that's top three overall again luke detail roman um and that's your recap for the results uh, for the first few races let's get on to the points now i'm not gonna go too hard and analyze i'll let you guys see them i'll go through them but i'm not gonna go too hard we're three rounds into the season and the way that i look at it is like these first three rounds were almost like a preview of the season right we did one race of each track type almost kind of like giving everybody a preview like okay this is what this series looks like and now in these next 12 rounds and and the new rules and stuff like that too we're to do a um giving everybody a preview getting everybody acquainted with those and like now figured it out see what the tracks are like and now we can kind of like get into the groove and these next 12 rounds are really going to be like the season that's kind of the way that i look at it um but yeah it's a 15 round season we're three rounds it's too early it's too early so i'm not going to like heavy an analyze like oh we got these sick ass battles here it's like we do but you know there's a lot of time left so i'm not going to overhype it too much like there's a lot there's a lot of time left a lot of time left a lot of things to happen a lot of evolution to to happen um okay so luke's launch detail that's the top three right now i have a pretty decent gap in the lead slaunch and detail are very close for second and honestly roman's not that far off of them either roman's having a very strong start this is this has been his strongest like hog start to his season for sure or just this this is already if he can keep this up, this will be his strongest hog season. Like, absolutely. He's been very good. Um, so that's, that. you know, those spots are very close. Um, and if any of those any of those guys can start competing for the, the lead as well, if they get a, a really good round, a really good round with, like, a win in a second place, and they could easily, they're they're close enough to where they can, they can get to that, and even while they're having their close battle with each other. And Soul's not that far off either. In fifth place, six points. He's got eight points behind, Cam or eight points ahead of Camby. Six points behind Roman. Soul's in a good spot where he's like not, you know, he's not off to a great start, but he's off to a good start. Um, and he's he's not like too far off. He's not he's he's not too far behind. Um, and he can kind of get into a groove and, and make some gains. He's in a good spot. Camby, a little bit further behind, but still, a few top fives, a podium. Not bad, especially with all the lagouts that he dealt with. At Little Texas, like it's a good start for Camby, um, and yeah, even though the results don't reflect it that much, I mean Camby, I think Camby's just very track dependent in the Hogs. Some tracks Camby's honestly pretty good. I mean, hell, he got a moto win in Rallycross. Like some tracks in the Hogs, he's really good, and then other ones he's not. And it's just it's so track dependent for him, almost more than any other driver. It feels like it just really depends. Um, also depends on the damn Xbox. <laughs> Apparently, that's the biggest factor. Uh, yeah, it's rough for him. Uh, and then we have the driver. Those are all the drivers in the top, of course, that have been to all three rounds. Now we go to the drivers that have been to two rounds. Opix, Hunter, Matt, Vulcan, Armada. Um, speaking of which, great start for Matt that he's in these two round drivers and that he's in the point position that he is. It's honestly a really good improvement for him so far. And I expect that like with the ovals, like, he, you know, he can get good finishes there and maybe he can continue that. Um, and then and obviously missing the triple crown hurt him as well. So that's another thing. Like these guys, like Hunter Opix, they have another moto on these. These are these are the four motos guys. These are the five motos guys. So they have an edge there too. Um, but yeah, you know it's a it's a good improvement for him so far. Hunter's kind of in um, a spot where he had you know only two races in. He had a decent little Texas. His Long Beach wasn't great. And then Opix had a fantastic. Opix had a fantastic um, little Texas send off for him in that overall. So that was pretty sweet. Vulcan and Armada still trying to find their groove early on. And then Real Dill and Coop. Coop should be back next week, and we'll see if Real Dill can, can start showing up too. Um, but yeah, that's I don't want to go too much more into it. That's the points. It's just too early to go too crazy in depth on it. The schedule. So one thing I want to say already, so we're racing St. Pete next week. I did some updates to it. I think this track's going to be great. And the schedule, we have almost complete we're waiting on iowa and pocono from opix and we're waiting on detail to finish up laguna seca and i think opix has iowa started as well that's the only three tracks that we're waiting on the rest of this massive schedule is basically ready to go saint pete's on my files indies on my files road america is on slaunch's files it needs pits but the track is obviously is obviously good to go milwaukee miles on mine lafayette now with pits is on romans watkins Glen. we made a switch here uh detail now we're going to co forge mid ohio 
and I did test on Watkins Glen with a lot of people. And then, you know, obviously, because we were going to do that track, I asked him after it, and I was like, I mean, we should probably just race this because it's ready to go. And he's like, yeah. And basically everybody that I tested Watkins Glen with said the same thing too, which is like, this track's... Basically, everybody that I tested with agreed, like, this track's too good not to race. Like, race this damn track now. Don't put it in a future season, because that's why I was making it. I was just I was just bored. I was in the mood for Forge. I just wanted to make a track that we could race in a future season. I just made it. And then after, and it fits with Indy too. They've raced on it in the past. It fits with the season. And yeah, I just tested it with people. It's on my files. You guys can check it out. I recommend it. It might be my most, it's it's my most of the road course tracks. This is the one I'm looking forward to the most now by far, easily, easily. Um, I'm really proud of it. I think it's it should be really fun to race on. And it's just, it was, it's just fun. It's just fun. You just, it's a little bit different with the rumbles. You gotta check it out, see what I mean. Um, so yeah, that's not, and then again, Iowa, Avix working on Iowa and Pocono. Portland's on my files, ready to go. Toronto, Roman recently finished up. It's on his files. You can check it out. Gateway's been on Slaunches for a while. So yeah, almost the entire schedule is ready to go. But next week in particular is St. Pete. And something I'll mention at the end of this video, this will be the end of the recap, and then I'll do my separate video for the stuff that I want to talk about. Um, so St. Pete, um... St. Pete, we're gonna we're gonna try some changes. So obviously we've had three rounds, each track type, uh, see how the things work and the new rules work, Dua. And I want to I want to try some things out for next week, and then if they're good, stick with them, and we'll see. Although the one of the changes I'm pretty sure we'll keep. The rest of them are kind of experimental. So what are they? I'll try to do this quickly and succinctly. In the motos, we're gonna be doing two full mags shot for the two pits in however again the same thing where you have to shoot at least a bullet on the stop but how you want to get the 24 is up to you you just have to shoot you just have to shoot a bullet on a stop you can't like not shoot a bullet on a stop um but yeah 24 bullets instead of 12 now at the magnum which means of course you'll have to complete that first reload animation the rules for the second one are the same um you know you don't have to complete that second reload animation once you're done with your shooting your bullets you're good but obviously that first one you have to complete because how the hell else are you going to shoot the next 12 bullets um so yeah i just the pits it it makes the, having the two mags makes the strategy potential which is already the cool part of this pit system even greater obviously it makes it even greater because now there's that reload factored in and now there's so many more bullet combinations factored in and it's gonna make a, you'll start to see the strategy and feel the strategy element a lot better. And honestly, just watching and competing in the first few races, it just, the pits just felt too fast. And I think most people could probably agree. It just felt like there wasn't enough time spent in the pits. It just felt off. The balance didn't feel right. So we're gonna try that with the motos, still two pits. It's just now you have to get through 24 bullets instead of 12. And uh, we're gonna see how it goes. I think it should be good because again, I think it's gonna make the highlight of this pit system, which is the strategy element, I think it's gonna make that better. And it'll be more time in the pits, which again, it just didn't feel, the balance just didn't feel right there. Now the other changes are gonna be the, the heat races. Picking your pit boxes. This will now happen before the heats for St. Pete. It'll be before the heats, the drivers, um, it'll go based off the heat starting order now instead of the finishing order. So the drivers that had the worst overall, they'll get that first pick. I just think this is a cool way. It's another like nice advantage for the drivers that have the rough overall. Previously, something to help them out. It's not gonna, you know, win them the race, right? It's a nice advantage for them to have that most likely won't win them a race. I think it's a cool thing for them to have. And all the people that were fast are gonna be, you know, having those second picks at the back half. Like it's, they're all gonna be affected uh, buy it as well and it'll it should even out pretty well um so we're doing it that way and we're the reason why is because we're going to try doing a practice pit um in the heats now because after racing we've had so many like incidents and people not being completely used to it in a race scenario with the pits in the motos specifically in the first moto to the point where i'm like okay there's some merit to it like we should try doing a pit in the heats and it also will spice up the heats a little bit add a little bit of strategy to them. And uh, and because of this, we're gonna have to make the heats longer as well. The heats are gonna have to be longer. So for these street and road course races, we'll add two laps onto the heats of what they would be. Otherwise, this is not reflected in the schedule that you're looking at right now. I have to go through it still. So just saying it's not reflected now, but the heats are gonna be two laps longer. Um, because obviously the pit window, like the heats are smaller, they have to be. And another change, the motos, right? 
two laps in heat or uh, pits open, two laps to go, they close. In the heats, it's going to be one lap in open, one lap to go close. Because again, the heats aren't as long. Even even with us extending them, they aren't as long. So that just needs to be adjusted. Uh, what else needs to be mentioned? Okay, so the one pit that you do in the heat, there's there's not going to be the strategy element. It's just going to be one mag, not two, because um, a way of looking at it, I guess, is it'll be you know two mags for two pits in the motos, right? In the heat race, you're only doing one pit, one mag. So just go through the one mag. So there's not going to be the strategy element. Everybody's just going to empty the clip, get to that reload animation, and then go. Um, but again, the main the main point of the, the heat pit is to give a little bit of spice in the heat, but mostly to give a race scenario practice for doing pits. Like, I think that's a valuable thing after doing these first few rounds. I think that is a nice thing. Um, and also, another added benefit of the heat races being longer is I think maybe we'll get some cleaner racing in the motos too, giving people a little more practice of racing against each other in you know a racing scenario not just like practice so just a lot of benefits i could see we'll see if it actually works out that way but a lot of benefits that i could see to doing it this way if you guys have any questions on any of that stuff if i forgot to mention anything leave it in the comments um before i end off this recap here uh well lo really looking forward to saint pete next week and then the second triple crown of indy the big race of indy after that i think it's going to be really cool these it's going to be a banger to close out the month i'm really looking forward to frick i mean like the next like four or five rounds honestly like the, the the next like month and a half like i'm really looking forward to seriously um but specifically these next two so if you can make them i think they'll be really cool races let me know in the comments if you have any questions on this the other stuff or also just uh you know, thoughts, opinions, stuff like that. I'm going to do some polls on the channel as well the next few days on, on how you're feeling about Indog so far now that we're three rounds in. And that's another reason why we're doing this experiment now, right? Like, if, if we could make these changes to improve the season, right, better do it now where it's still pretty early than wait, right? I, I, I feel like this, this round is like the last possible round for us to do something different like that. It's going to be a little too late past this, so... Yeah, and again, like, I think there'll be good changes across the board. We'll see. I think the moto changes to the pits are basically locked. Like, it's just, I'm convinced that'll be better. The heat races are a little less so, so it's a little more experimental. So it could be tweaked, but we'll see. I think they'll be good too. I think that's about it. I think that's about it. So hope you guys enjoyed the recap. Um, yeah, trying to make it to those next few races. Again, I think they're going to be great. I think the tracks are great. Really looking forward to them enjoying Indy Hog so far, and now that we're all getting used to it and getting back into the groove again, I think it's just going to get better. I think it's just going to get better. Um, and I can see these next two races being really special. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and see you in the next one, which will be almost like a podcasty type thing, but I think it'll be... I think it's needed. I think it's needed. Some stuff I'll mention in there, so... Hope you guys enjoyed it, and see you in the next one.